Hey everybody, Big Jano here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we were taking a look at the very first 3D printing content of the channel by taking a look at my very first 3D printer. <laughs> I apologize for that take. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're kicking off the 3D printing content on the channel by taking a look at my very first 3D printer sitting over there, the Anycubic Mega X. I got this printer back a few months ago when a lot of us were still working from home uh, during the COVID-19 uh, outbreak, and I figured what better way to fill the void of not being able to do anything uh, than to make an investment and buy my own 3D printer to work on my own personal projects uh, besides what I use the 3D printer for when I'm at work. So I've only been 3D printing for about a year now, and that's mainly because of my job. So I, uh, where I work currently as an engineer, I use a 3D printer to develop and prototype various things uh, for our company and the various products my company makes. It was really there at my full-time job that I really discovered 3D printing and really got to start using it more and more. Um, using the printer at work, I got to understand how 3D printers work, how the process works, how it actually just all comes together, and being comfortable with it enough there for about a year or so, I made the, I made the decision to buy myself one and continue the learning process here at home. So being a first-time 3D printer hobbyist, uh, searching for my first 3D printer, I looked at many different reviews of various different printers, um, the known brands and not so well-known brands, and I ended up coming across the Anycubic Mega X. Um, I saw that it was a fairly new printer, but I saw that there were some really, really good reviews on it by some really good people that do a lot for the 3D printing community. Uh, Joel Telling, 3D Printing Nerd, he does a really great review of this printer. His link is down below in the description for that video. Um, after looking at his review and seeing some of the other reviews, of the printer and with the features that we're going to talk about in a little bit, I decided to go and jump forth with the Anycubic Mega X. Also, after seeing great reviews over its predecessor, the i3 Mega S, I was really excited to see um, if this printer is really meant for someone who's a first-time 3D printer like myself, or if this is a printer that's maybe a little bit more geared to the experienced user. Um, I was also really interested to see how the features of the Mega S would be carried over to the Mega X in its larger format. Today we're going to be talking about this printer and all of its details. We're going to be talking about all the features this printer has. Uh, we're going to be talking about all the things I really like about this printer and the time I've had it. And we're going to talk about the stuff that I don't particularly care for with this printer. One note before we begin, this review will be 100% unbiased opinion. Anycubic did not send me this printer. I paid for this printer with my own money and all thoughts and reviews and stuff that I tell you are my opinion and my opinion only. Use other opinions to form your decision making when buying a 3D printer. With that said, let's get into the review. The Anycubic Mega X is a medium to large sized FDM printer. It is a fairly large printer with a print bed capable of printing anything up to 300 millimeters in the X direction, 300 millimeters in the Y direction, and 305 millimeters in the Z or Z. Here is some other information on this printer from the Anycubic website, including compatible materials with this printer, as well as the nozzle and bed maximum temperatures. For this review, however, we're going to focus only on PLA material, and that is because that was the only material I had with me at the time of review. While I don't have any unboxing videos to show you guys, I can assure you the printer was very well packaged together when I received it. All the components of the printer were compartmentalized and separated accordingly, with parts being divided by custom cut foam panels that really fit well into the box. This printer starts at around $400 US, however you can also buy this printer on Amazon, but be careful as the prices are usually a little bit higher than Anycubic's website. Anycubic does have sales from time to time in which you might be able to find this printer at a little bit of a discount. For that price, you actually get quite a bit that comes with the printer. In addition to the printer, you get one full-size roll of PLA filament, a replacement hot end with Bowden tube attached, an extra limit switch, and some 3D printing tools and accessories. Even all of the hardware and the smaller components were all grouped together in the same bag, so taking those out of the box, I knew I wasn't going to lose them. One thing I really love about this printer is its modular design. Once you get the components out of the box, 
there are really only two pieces of the printer that have to be installed together in order for it to be up and running. This printer includes a robust rectangular base, which I found to be really, really sturdy, and I found it to also hide all the electrical wiring and hardware very, very well. The printer also includes a full-sized SD card slot and a port for wired connections to your computer. The base also includes a 350 watt 12 volt meanwhile power supply, which I found to be very nicely tucked away within the base. The gantry of the frame is also built very sturdy with custom cut aluminum angles. You also have the hot end carriage, X direction belt, and the dual threaded Z axis rods all attached to the gantry for easy installation. The dual threaded rods also provide sturdiness and also provide level printing throughout your prints. I found the assembly of the gantry to the base to be quite simple. I just lined up the screw holes on the gantry to the screw holes on the base and then took the hardware that came with the printer and screwed them in accordingly until tight. Once the gantry is assembled to the base, you can go ahead and assemble the filament spool holder with the screws provided. Once that's done, you can go ahead and install your filament runout sensor. I found this to be very simple and needed no other explanation whatsoever. Once that's installed, you can go ahead and plug it in to its dedicated plug. Anycubic decided to put the filament runout sensor as well as the spool holder off to the side of the printer, but almost at a very interesting angle. This angle isn't the worst angle, but it does add some strain to the filament when you run it through. At this time, you can also plug in the two other cables that come with the printer into the appropriate plugs. These were nicely color coordinated, which I found to be a very nice touch and easy to understand where they plug in. I thought Anycubic did a great job of providing crisp, clear instructions for their printer assembly. They were easy to understand, and there were many pictures to help me through the printer assembly process. Anycubic provides paper instruction documentation with the printer, as well as the PDF version that is available on the Anycubic website. There's just one more thing to worry about before turning on the printer. On the back of the base, there's a switch that determines the correct voltage of the printer. In the United States, you will set this at 110 volts. There is a 220 volt options for countries that use it, but for the US, 110 will be the correct voltage. Using the incorrect voltage could cause damage to the printer and or other problems could occur. Once the printer is powered on, you now have access to a small touchscreen interface on the front of the base. Here you can navigate through all the settings on the 3D printer, as well as make any adjustments to the settings if necessary. I did find this interface to be a little uh, confusing at first. I didn't know where all the settings were at the very beginning, uh, but once I played around with it a little bit, it gave me a better idea of what settings are in what group. Once I powered the printer on, it's time to home the nozzle and level the printing bed. I found the bed leveling to be very easy to use with the four bed leveling knobs on each corner of the print bed. Here you can adjust the knobs as needed and Anycubic provides a piece of paper for you to level the nozzle on the print bed at the correct height. Once the bed was leveled, I was ready to print my first 3D print ever. I started off by printing the test print that came included on the SD card with the printer. In this case, two owls. Now this is printing with the factory settings of the printer, not changing anything in Cura. Overall, these owls came out pretty good for right out of factory settings. There was a little bit of stringing and some of the, uh, there were some blemishes here and there, but overall these look really, really well for our first print on this printer. Once I dialed in the print settings a little bit and tweaked everything to perfection, I was getting some really successful prints with this machine. One of my favorite features of this printer is the print bed itself. The printer has an ultra base print bed, which has a special coating on the bed that really helps adhere the parts of the printer while printing, as well as help pull the parts off easily while it's cooled down completely. In my time with the printer, I've had zero issues with the ultra base bed. I find it to be very easy to pull off prints. Just be careful not to scratch the bed with the metal scraper. I suggest using a plastic one to avoid such issues. A few of my favorite prints I was able to do with this machine include the inverted roller coaster loop found on the top of my shelf. Here I used Hatchbox Royal Blue and Silk Gold PLA for the coaster track and the supports. As you can see, the quality is really, really well done. Um, please ignore the tape. I, it wasn't a print issue, it just fell off my shelf. I will post links to the 3D print files mentioned in this video, posted in the description below. Here's a look at my shelf of everything I was able to print with the Anycubic Mega X. We're going to look at some of these prints a little bit more in detail and see what happens when we throw a bunch of different PLA materials into the printer. Up first we have a standard Benchy printed with the white PLA that came with the printer. Overall I was very satisfied with this print. 
the printer was able to handle all the different features of the Benchy, and I found little to no stringing. A simple tweak in retraction settings would let me get this print almost perfect. All the layers of the print looked really clean, and I found no shifts or obscurities at all. Here we have the Big Jano channel text, printed in Xyltex fluorescent green PLA. Came out great with no issues whatsoever. Here we have a miniature version of Epcot's Spaceship Earth at Walt Disney World. Here I used Filamentum's Rapunzel Silver PLA, and boy I was shocked of how well the results came out. Each detail of each triangle just came out brilliantly with the metallic color. Super clean. My biggest print with this printer came in the likes of a miniature replica of the Walt Disney World People Mover, also found at Disney World. This was printed with a combination of Matter Hacker's Build Royal Blue and White PLAs, as well as the Silver Filamentum PLA from before. Again, everything came out really good detail, and I was super happy with the print. Despite having generally good success with this printer, there have been a few hiccups along the way that I have encountered that I'd like to talk to you guys about. One of the issues early on I had with this printer was the extruder gear and some of its internal hardware. So a few months after I received this printer, I noticed I started having some issues with under extrusion with my filament. I could also hear the extruder gear making clicking noises every time I went to load filament in. At this point, I decided to take apart the extruder to figure out the problem. Once I took off the cover and unloaded the extruder gear, I noticed the ball bearing holding the gear together completely disintegrated. Once I replaced the ball bearing, I thought I was back in business. However, I was still having some issues with under extrusion, so then I decided to take apart the hot end. Once taken apart, I noticed the PTFE tubing at that end had charred slightly, causing the PTFE tubing to melt a little bit. This was causing my blockage, and so I replaced the hot end and the PTFE tubing. I probably could have just used the PTFE tubing replacement, but I decided to replace the hot end entirely just in case. I did buy some Capricorn tubing to replace the next time I have this issue. I also had an issue with one of the fittings on the extruder gear that connected the Bowden tube. The fitting broke not too long after I got the printer, but thankfully I was able to find a cheap replacement on Amazon and that solved the problem. While inconvenient, these issues weren't the end of the world whatsoever, and I was still happily able to enjoy printing with this machine. This is just for you guys to keep in mind if you run into any similar issues, as well as to convey my opinions on where this machine could be better. This can easily be done through some tweaks in the design, as well as some improved choices in the hardware. So there you have it guys, my review on the Anycubic Mega X. I believe this is a great first 3D printer for people that are just dipping their toe in the 3D printing world. It's a easy to use printer for the most part. It gives really great quality prints and it even helps you learn about 3D printers in general and all the different components. I think even the troubleshooting parts I had helped me really understand more of the different things to look out for in 3D printers to be able to not only understand the printers more, but to be able to easily fix problems down the road uh, with these machines. Definitely keep in mind with, uh, like most 3D printers, you will have to replace components from time to time. Um, things do break. Um, I believe that Anycubic does a great job of giving you a good amount of replacement parts that come with the original order of the printer. As always, the more you can understand the ins and outs of 3D printers and your printer in general, I think the better off you'll be in the long run. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what your thoughts are on this printer review. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know why down below. Um, if any of you have any Cubic Mega X, let me know your comments below and what your thoughts on the printer are. Um, if I didn't cover something, also let me know down below in the comments. I am all for that, and I will be glad to help you in any way, shape, or form. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of you guys. I hope to see you next time, and as always, keep doing it big.